Right, okay guys, welcome to another uh, magazine look at. And this video I'm going to be taking a look at Cult SNES Magazine Superplay. Now, this was issue number one. It came out in November 1992 and it ran until I believe September 1996, which would make that just under four years. This magazine is fondly remembered because for a magazine, a quite an early magazine, it had absolutely glorious, colourful um, pictures. You know, a lot of magazines back then, um, it was black and white stuff, but this was just fully colour. Now, as you can see there from the, uh, the you know, the, the title of the, the magazine, it was heavily influenced from Japan. There was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of manga, a lot of manga artwork, which just made it look glorious. Uh, I mean, even at the very top there, you'll see it beside the price. It's got some Japanese writing. Uh, but this was a UK based magazine. Um, what set this apart was uh, it used to feature imported games as well. So rather than being limited to just buying games from your uh, local shop in the UK, you could actually import games. And they used to have reviews of imported games. And it was, it was a double edged sword because it was wonderful to read about these games, but then you looked at the price of them. And you know, a lot of the time to import a game was serious money, maybe a hundred quid upwards. But uh, yeah, absolutely glorious looking magazine. Uh, if you do happen to have any of these uh, kicking about, please do not throw them in the bucket. They are worth uh, some serious money nowadays. I mean, I've seen them go for like 20 quid for one. So don't throw them out. Stick them on eBay or give them to me and I shall look after them. Uh, so yeah, let's see. This is issue number one. What have we got here? Import reviews. Super Mario Kart. Bart's Nightmare. Eh, eh. Official reviews, Dragon's Lair plus Street Fighter 2 gets a UK release. Every British game reviewed. Free brilliant Super Play pin badge. Again, that's probably worth some money if you've got that, guys. And it's also going to feature the best Street Fighter 2 cheats ever. Super Nintendo Sensation Secrets of World's Top Game Machine revealed. And this Prince of Persia game playing guide won hundreds of games, Spidey and X Men programmers speak and Britain's biggest ever game show. So yeah, let's dive straight in and see if it's shite or not. Right, most wanted dudes. Spider-Man, oh, it'll be Smash TV, oh the Gladiator Smash TV, uh, don't know what that is, Undertaker, yeah, and Big Arnie, Simpsons, and Krusty the Clown, that is for Acclaim, the word on the street. More Manga Mania! 2089, Venus erupts with war, the planet is split into the opposing states, da ba da ba da ba da ba da Is that just a book? I think it is. Right, let's see the contents. <clears throat> now this is, as I say, is issue one. The Super Nintendo, your complete guide. Everything you ever wanted to know about what is quite possibly the best games machine in the world. Now that probably still stands true a lot of people even now. I mean... I wouldn't say it's the best console in the world, but it's one of my favourites. It's just so many, uh, so many good games for it. Now this magazine was heavily influenced because it was kind of based. It was heavily, in, sorry, heavily influenced from the sort of Japanese culture, manga, etc. You can see you'll see plenty of manga later on. Now this this was what made this magazine so exciting, probably more exciting than most uh, magazines out there, import reviews, you know, back in 91, 92, whenever it was, um, if you wanted to buy the latest games, you had to import them. Nowadays, largely most games do uh, come across to Europe, um, but back then, a lot of games never did, so if you really wanted to buy them, you could go and uh, order them through import. What will be interesting to see is the price of these. So here we go, um, import Super Mario Kart. Interesting to see. Super Express, new magazine for Super NES launched. Welcome to Super Play. Time for me to sit here and tell you just how good this new magazine is and not just how good either. Was that different to this is the first of a new type of games magazine? Bear with me while I show you how. For a start, Super Play is perhaps the first British games mag that isn't computer tied down by a UK game release date. 
Why? Because the Super Nintendo market is a world market. Great importers, fa sorry, importers, far away UK release dates and the easy availability of adapters mean it's just as important for the British game player to know when a top release is coming out in Japan. Da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da What have we got up here? Super Express UK release previews. Acclaim, what is that? I can hardly see that, what is that? Acclaim have a fair number of games scheduled for official UK release over the next six months. Coming late in October, you'll be able to check out their version of Terminator 2. I don't know what that is. And what is this? That's uh, Kickoff 2. <laughs> and there is. Uh, is that PGA Golf? I see the ratings quite small. Oh, there we go, Electronic Arts. Sadly, it doesn't look as if EA are actually going to get anything out by Christmas. But if you were to guess, Desert Sight and PGA Tour Golf uh, in January. So there's the, the reviewers. Now, one of my mates, is he working there? No, he's not. One of my mates, uh, Andrew Lowe, he was a, he was a reviewer in uh, Superplay. I think it was a wee bit later on. Superplay Profiles, a magazine team in full. Matt Bealby, I remember him, I think he's still in the industry. Jonathan Davis, I think he used to be in Games Master quite a lot. Jason Brooks, don't remember him. Sue Grant, don't remember her. Tracy Rochester, nice, uh, she must have got these trousers off uh, MC Hammer. And Jeremy Brisma, Bridgemass, again, don't remember him. Interesting to know if these guys are still in the business. I know Matt Bealby, I think, is still involved. Don't really know too much about the rest of them. Mario the movie, oh dearie me. <laughs> Shush, it's a secret. As you may already know, a Mario film is in production and getting onto the set is a challenge the plumber himself couldn't crack. Which all adds up to the fact that we don't know how a great deal so we don't know a great deal about it apart from the basics. The producers are hoping to keep most of the movie secrets exactly that way until much closer to the release date. You know what, I've never actually seen the film. I've heard it's absolutely pants, so I've made no Real interest in actually looking at it. Apologies, by the way, about the. You can see there it's the way it's been scanned. But you know what? I'm not going to knock anybody because the fact that anybody would could be asked to scan all these magazines is just absolutely mental. Super Swift. Now I think my mate Steve Snake worked in this one. It's a good game. It did come out in the Amiga as well. Super plays Hot List. The best games aren't always in use. If none of the carts reviewed this ish. Tickle your fancy, try one of these modern classics. Super less. So yeah, they were they were basically based on older systems. I mean Contra was based on Contra on the NES. Zelda, we know about Zelda. Super Alest, or at least I don't know how you pronounce it. I say Alest. It might be Super Alest. I don't know. And Parodius, the mental uh, nemesis clone with cats and animals and what have you. Acclaim. Acclaim have a fair number of games scheduled for official UK release over the next six months or so. Come late October you'll be able to check out their version of Terminator 2. No thank you, that was Pish. That's Wonder Boy. Yeah, you know, when you look at when you look at screenshots, you know, like there's Super Adventure Island. It looked arcade perfect. It looked just as good as what was in the arcades. And it's Again, as I keep saying, it's hard to really convey just how exciting seeing pictures like that were, you know. Some people still had, uh, I mean the 8-bit machines were still very much a thing, they were still, you know, stupidly popular back in the early 90s. I mean, I had moved on, I had moved on to the ST and then the Amiga at this point. Um, so obviously the, the, the jump in graphics wasn't quite as much for me as it would be for somebody to say having a spectrum and then looking at something like that but it just it was it still looked mind blowing um, and the fact that it was all in a cartridge with the, you know, the game pad with six buttons, eight buttons, whatever it was, it just looked it was a different level of game that we'd never actually seen. Uh, what's that there? Uh, I can hardly read it. Robocop 3. Oh, that's interesting. Unfortunately for Ocean, uh, Orion, sorry, I thought that would say Ocean. The company behind the Robocop series is in dire financial straits, one result being that no one's sure whether the film will appear in cinemas anymore. 
Is that Robocop 3 we're talking about? If not, that's probably not a bad idea. I mean, Robocop 3... Was there a Robocop 3? I can't remember, actually. There was a Robocop 2, which wasn't very good. Now, Robocop 3, I believe, was released by Ocean on the Amiga, and it was all kind of, uh, oh, what do you call it? It was uh, a kind of 3D type game with uh, polygons, that's the word I was looking for, polygons, whereas this one looks more sort of side-on, kind of more similar to the original Robocop. Microprose, you'd think the big boys of PC flight sims would want to keep as far away from consoles as they can. Well, we think again. Home computer hits Rainbow Tycoon and uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, I don't know how how these uh, games would really transfer over to a console. I mean, I know was it Sim City? I think came out in it. Books in America, there's a big market for video game books. Most of them being hints and tip manuals for games, PC, NES, Mega Drive, etc., etc. Is this mega? What is this? He's back. The Duke of Darkness, Count Dracula, has returned to unleash untold horrors upon the helpless villagers of Transylvania in his blood curdling, spine chilling adventure. Is this an advert? I think it is, yeah, it is an advert. It's an advert. I couldn't really figure it if it was an advert or a review. Yeah. It's here, the biggest UK game show ever. What was this about? This was the Super Play. Uh, sorry, join the Super Play team at the Future Entertainment Show in 1992. So where's that? Was that? At, uh, ah, there we go. Earl's Court. That's the one I went to a few times. I never went to. I went to one in 1988. I think it was 1987, 1988. I think it was 1988 and 1989. I went. I went twice. That brings back fond memories. What's he bought there? A CD TV. Good luck with that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong could you be? There again, it's probably worth an absolute fortune, so what do I know? What can you expect to see at the show? Giant stands from all the big hardware companies, including humongous ones from Nintendo, Sega, blah 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 blah. How much does it say? How much tickets were? Mm, to avoid the queues and save money, please for a credit card hotline. Was. But yeah, I loved it. It was called PCW Show. Personal Computing. PCW. Personal Computing. I don't know what it stood for. <laughs> it's called the PCW Show. What do I know? Capcom Power Stick Fighter vs Apollo Joystick. Need the ultimate arcade experience in the home, then you need a joystick. And if you can get one designed for the SNES, all the better. We put two lightly contenders through their paces. That's quite nice, actually. I don't think possible to get nowadays. Anime World. My daughter loves anime. It's not something that I'm into at all. It's... As you see there, I mean, it's... Anime is absolutely massive. Massive in the in the Japan. Getting an imported SFC or SNES to run through PAL has always been a problem and early PAL converted consoles often overheated. I must admit, I never actually uh, imported any machines. I just never... The bottom line was I couldn't afford it. Um, I simply couldn't afford it so I never did. I was always insanely jealous when I saw imported games. The best serious Super Nintendo driving game yet exhaust heat. There are plenty of good racing games on the Super Nintendo, but we're still looking for the definitive great racing game, or at least we were until Super Mario Kart arrived. Now all we need is a top-notch serious, serious driving game to complement it. Could Exhaust Heat be the one? Exhaust Heat was good, yeah, it's, it utilised the, the Mode 7 really, really well. Actually, I, I love that, I play that quite a lot, I've never, never got very far in it. So this was uh, only in Japan, this is obviously a pre-release. What's that? On August the 27th this year, Super Mario Kart was released in Japan at a price of £38 and indeed it's reviewed this issue. However, this is no ordinary cartridge, it's, it only, it's only the second game to incorporate a digital SP chip. That's right, first seen in Pilot Wings. I think, uh, no, I was going to say stunt car racer or whatever it's called. 
and uh, Star, Star Fox, I think they use a different type of chip. Let's see what's in the, the charts. So this is Super Play, so Super WWF, dare me. Super Smash TV, Lemmings, Adam's Family, F-Zero, Super Tennis. There we go, UK import charts, no surprise here, Street Fighter 2. I mean, I think people were paying like 80 quid for that at that point. Interestingly, see Super Smash TV there, and then it's also there as well. Obviously, it, you know, you imported games because they, they played, they played uh, full screen, and they also played at 60 megahertz, which made a big difference. The Japanese charts, yeah, you compare the UK charts: Super WWF WrestleMania, Super Smash TV. Jap Japan's got Super Mario Kart, Street Fighter 2. Okay, Mario Paint. Right, alright, I take, I take the argument back. Interplay interview, who's this with? He looks very, very 80s. Nice ties on. Or 90s even. Richard Kane, the white shirt, and Mike Webb show off an award for Soltis. They won from an American Nintendo magazine. Mario Madness, stunning graphics. You can win yourself this pinball. Yeah, this was, these competitions were uh, insanely popular back in, the, back in the day in magazines. The Super Nintendo, your complete guide, or your comp complete guide. <laughs> right, so what's the difference? Right, so that's the UK one, the Super Nintendo. You got the Super. Ah, right, that's just. Ah, right, okay, so is that the. I thought that was the Japanese and American one, didn't What's, what's this? Is this the, the Japanese one? Super Famicom. Hmm. So what are the differences in the front? A British Super Nintendo, you can see the two joypad ports and not a lot else. The Japanese machine is identical. There we go, a grey a grey importer story. To give you some idea about what life as a grey importer is all about. We spoke to Console Concepts, one of the Grey's industry's leaders. First, a bit of history. Console Concepts, based in Newcastle upon Lyme, Staffordshire, has been at the forefront of the market since 1989, doing most of its business by mail order. The company was originally known as PC Engine Supplies, and in that forum helped establish the popularity of the engine as a hardcore gamer's machine. With the arrival of further console releases like the Mega Drive, Super Famicom, and Neo Geo, the market expanded yet again. The company now estimates that the size of the UK grey import market for consoles may be around 10 to 25 percent of the, the the total market. It's quite interesting to hear that. Yeah, we're not going to go reading all that. 25 to give away. What's this super adapter? So yeah, this is what you basically needed to play. Uh, to play an import. So here we go, here's the import review Super Mario Kart. Yeah, you know, that this was just like a an overdose of wond wonderness. <laughs> that is half freeze, probably not. It just looked amazing, you know. You're just the abundance of colour and screenshots and it just looked so exciting. What's this here? There's an enormous amount of variety from track to track. Here, for example, you've got the island top. I wonder why they put a, a black and white picture in. So, Super Mario Kart, the price was 50 quid. 8 meg a bit. I don't quite know what that was. It wasn't like 8 meg. I don't know what it was. Not 4 meg, I should say. Right, let's see what it's saying. Matt Bealby says, This is great, an inventive, clever and lovable driving game, packed with character and detail. It's fab in two-player mode, so fab in fact that Jonathan and I, inspired by the game, are racing to finish our reviews. We'll see who gets in first. Uh, so to the game, imagine the basic look and feel of F-Zero, impressive Mode 7 racing tracks disappearing into the distance, plenty of speed, tons of bouncing off walls as you misjudge one corner coupled with ultra-friendly feel of the Mario games. 
Uh, 93% is that all? Mm, I thought it might have got more than that actually. Quite simply the best racing game yet in the Super Nintendo and one of the funniest, most playable ones in any system. Yeah, I mean I think uh, it would be interesting if you if you had a, a poll of a hundred uh, Mario Kart fans and ask them what they think is the best one. I would have probably said that the SNES one was the best one up until the Wii U one came out. I wasn't a massive fan of the uh, the Nintendo Switch. I wasn't a massive fan of the uh, N64 or the Cube ones. The Cube one had it was just harder. It introduced the two players. You could swap over and that kind of stuff. I think the SNES one was always going to be the best. But I've got to see the Wii U and the Wii Switch versions. Is it Mario Kart 8? I think it is are just amazing, they really are, but I still play the SNES one even now, it's an amazing game. Yeah, it's simple looking when you compare what you know with what you've got nowadays obviously, but just a, an absolutely staggering game. Out of this world, so this was basically another world, yeah. Don't know why, so that was 45 quid. So does it tell you? So I'm just looking to see, so it was 50 quid. I'm sure it costs a lot more to import. Okay, another another great game. Never completed it. I've got quite far on it, but I've never actually completed it. Bart's Nightmare. Shite. Maybe it wasn't shite, but you know, when you're a... I would be what, in my twenties. I wasn't interested in playing Simpson games. Dinosaurs. Yeah, there was a lot of shovelware as well in this NES, I have to say. Even the Mega Drive as well. You know, not to say it wasn't a, a good game, but I wasn't interested. Super Pang, now, the SNES was probably the console that had the most games that had the word Super in front of it. You know, they did that Super Goals and Ghosts, Super Alexi, Super Contra, did they have Super Contra? I can't remember, but yeah, they put they put Super in front of a lot of games. Obviously, I play in this off the Super Nintendo. Pang, it's not a game I'm a particularly massive fan of. I know uh, a few of my mates love it to bits. I've never really played it too much, but I know it's a it's a good version on the SNES. Golden Fighter, forty two percent. The international obsession with Street Fighter Two looks set to continue well past its official UK release in November. There's never been a beat 'em up boasting such a winning combination of technical virtuosity and gameplay before, and little seems to get close in the near future. Yeah, I never even heard of that one. Golden Fighter, it just sounds crap. Hook, let's move swiftly on. Right, let's, I'm, I'm more interested to see the price of games. Especially the imports on there, just, eh. Uh, well, now wait a minute, all our games are brand new US versions. Street Fighter, that's not bad, actually, 50, 46 quid, that's not bad at all. I expected a lot more, I think if you wanted to import them yourself, it would have cost you 60, 70, 80 quid, maybe more. But I think these guys obviously bought them in, so that isn't actually bad at all. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, the magazines were just fully adverts. You don't really remember it quite so much. There you go, Super NES, Street Fighter 2 Japan, 54 quid. And people complain about, you know, <laughs> paying 99 pence for an app for their iPhone. <laughs> Prince of Persia. Prince of Persia is a game again, I've never really really gotten into much. The SNES version of this game is the finest one yet seen. All the levels have been redesigned for a start instead of a pretty big 12 level standing between you and the princess. This version features a colossal 20. And you can see them all right now. They should have a spoiler alert. Well, it is, to be fair, it is a gamer's guide, it's not a review. What's that? Hand... Handra's Big Adventure. Never even heard of that one. Adventure games were... Not adventure games, platform games were so, so common. Especially in the Mega Drive and SNES. Super F1 Circus. By Nichibutsu, £45. That was a US import. It does look... Ah, and I was going to say it looks similar to that exhaust but yeah, this was actually an over... You're looking down in the car and basically the whole screen just kind of spins around you. There you 
go head to head F1 Grand Prix 66. Percent Battle Grand Prix. There we go, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Players. Guide. There we go, I mean, what, 20, 30 years on, Street Fighter has never lost. The appeal is still there, it's still massive. I mean, what are we up to now? Is it Street Fighter 7 or something? I don't really know. Ah, there's that console concept, so that's the one they were talking about. There you go, you can get... What's that? Street Fighter... Two pads. Alright, so you get Street Fighter... So you're getting a US NES plus Street Fighter for 175 quid. I mean, it was a lot of money back then, but that's actually not bad. Yeah, although there again, it'd probably be the equivalent of about 400 quid now. Phalanx. Have I heard of that? Is that not? I'm sure that's an arcade game. Super Nintendo shoot ups fall into three distinct categories. There are all out no holes barred mega games. There are the real waste of space disappointments. And then there are ones like Phalanx. Is that a good or bad thing? The average games. Right, okay. Obviously, be consoles, you couldn't copy them. So, <laughs> Right, that page, if you want to spin your monitor. 180 degrees, you can look at the adverts. Camel try. I remember I played that in arcades. Kind of bizarre. It always reminds me of a uh, bonus level in Sonic the Hedgehog. It's a kind of magic. MD consoles. I used to go, there was a. Alright, oh, King Bit Games. I don't remember. I was just about to see. I used to go to a, an import shop and. In Leith and Edinburgh, James Thin Building. Never even knew that one existed. Well, I didn't have a NES, uh, a SNES at that point. I say there's so many adverts, but Dragon's Lair. Yeah, rather than uh, try and do the whole uh, CGI thing or the cartoon graphics, they've gone for a, a side platform. To be fair, it's probably a better game. I mean, Dragon's Lair, it's not, I'm not a fan of Dragon's Lair, it's just a reaction move left or right. Right, is this a review? Street Fighter 2, the official UK version of the Ultimate Beat 'em Up, is here at last. It's been number one in Japan and the States since its release and now looks set to achieve something similar over here. A new wave of Street Fighter fever is on the way. 94%. Shop around for Street Fighter 2, it may become one of the world's biggest selling games, but the UK price of £65. <whistles> £65, so that's what I was getting muddled up. So to buy it brand new in the UK is £65, quid. bloody hell. This madness when importers are selling the US and Japanese versions for around £45. Quid. Unbelievable, £65. Quid. And we moan about paying some games even now they sell for 65 quid, but 65 quid was about a week's wages, or well, certainly was for me, <laughs> back in the early 90s. Unbelievable. Super Smash TV. I'm guessing it would probably, it would use the four buttons for sort of firing direction. I play the arcade on quite a lot, a really nice game. Super Castlevania 5. 4, sorry, 91%. Trusty's Super Fun House. Remember getting that in Amiga. Joe and Mac, 72%. F0, 86%. The problem with this magazine is they'd probably already played the Japanese ones, and so when the, the UK ones came out, they were slightly not quite so enthusiastic. This is a truly original game and thoroughly good buy. It's got all the qualities to keep you playing and looks good enough to convert just about anybody to SNES them. I always remember, I never really. So I didn't. None of my mates had a SNES, but they, they did later. You know, they did later on. But most of the games for the SNES I, I saw when I watched Games Master. That seemed to be the kind of console of choice when it came to Games Master uh, challenges. Super R type, another great game. There's Sim City with two Y's. <laughs> Super Tennis. That is a brilliant game. It looks quite basic, but it's such a good game. It really is. Adam's family. I asked uh, Gary Bracey, who was one of the big big cheeses of Ocean Software, when I interviewed him. Uh, was it just was it the turn of the year? Was it last? I think it was maybe three months ago. 
and I asked Gary what was your favourite ocean game, what do you think the best ocean game was, and he said the Adams Family. He just said it was a great game, really good game. Super WWF, Super Soccer. Uh, I think, uh, do I remember seeing that one? I can't remember, uh, there was a soccer game which was one of the first games that came out. UN Squadron, ah, that's another, uh, that's a horizontal shoot em up. 91%. Final Fight. Final Fight in the SNES does get a bit of a hard time, I think because there was only, there was no two player option and there was only, was it two characters? pick from, is it Mike? I don't think you can pick from him, what does it say here? Any Super Nintendo beat him up has to live in the shadow of Street Fighter 2 and so is going to have to struggle to be noticed at all. Though that said, Street Fighter only covers one particular species of the of the genre. Is that what that says? That says genius? I can't see it. Uh, that leaves a multi-level getting piled on by loads of people at once territory up for grabs. Final Fight is pretty much the benchmark as far as the self beat em up is concerned and complements Street Fighter nicely. That's fine as far as it goes though I have to admit to finding scrolling beat em ups pretty tedious on the whole no matter how varied the scenery is and how many different moves you're able to employ. Final Fight is a bit different though and held my attention far longer uh, all that's missing, and it's something that might have been elevated the game from status of a goodbye to that of a must, is a two player option. Yeah. And I'm sure they also cut out one of the characters as well. Sheik Hanna, where's that about? It's in London, I think it is, yep. High Road, Wood Green, London. Bit too small to actually read. It's slightly off putting with the fact that the scan has kind of picked her head up twice. Let's move swiftly on. Mode 7, what is this? Is this tips or something? I think it is. Yeah, it's bizarre they use some really horrible black and white. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. That's damn difficult. John Madden's uh, football. Rushing Beat. What that one? Magic Sword, is that? That's a based on the Capcom arcade game, I think. Sim City. Super Tennis. Yeah, Super Tennis. It doesn't look very nice. You look at yeah, I mean, seriously, who wants to play that character? But it actually plays a really good version of tennis. It's probably better than uh, Super Family Tennis or is it Super Smash Tennis? Super Smash Tennis has the initial appeal. Me cartoon graphics. It's got lots of little nice touches, but. Pound for pound, I think Super Tennis is probably the better tennis game. If you like, Super Play Your Love Total. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I remember that. Total. I don't know if I've got them actually. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot all about that magazine actually. Like I said, I didn't have a SNES at this point, so I used to pick it up and look at it, and I was usually quite jealous. I'd be like, mm, okay, and I'd put it down because. All I could see was all these games that I could never ever afford. I couldn't buy any. I didn't have the machine. I couldn't afford it. So that was a little, uh, little summary. It was always ideal if you want. If you're about to buy a game, you could just flick to the back and have a look at this. Obviously, there was no such thing as ROMs or Everdrive cartridges back in 1992. Right, you've read us for the last 92 pages. Now it's your turn. Hey you, so you've heard this before, but it's worth making point again. Magazine, uh, is this a... I thought that was uh, a letters page. 14 issues of Superplay for the price of 12. If you've got any Superplay magazines, hang on to them, because they do go for... They're quite collectible. Um, I'm not going to say they go for silly money, I mean £1.95, but I've seen them go for 20 30 quid. so if you do have any... Um, hang on to them, or if you want me to look after them for you, then that's fine. Um, but yeah, don't just, don't, whatever you do, don't throw them out. <laughs> People will pay good money for these things. Right, let's see, you can't be arsed reading all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. Next month is Super Play. Anime Games Special. More tips, more games. Neo Geo, wow, 70 quid. Robo Army, £105. Now if I could go back in time, I would buy myself a copy of uh, Neo Turfmasters golf game because that goes for like 
300 quid now. <laughs> and finally an advert for Game Boy Lemmings. So that is it guys, that is Super Play. Um, really nice magazine, it brings back a lot of happy memories. Probably one of the nicest presented magazines that, I've, that was out back in the day. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it guys. Uh, if you've not subscribed to the channel and you enjoy the content, please do hit the subscribe button. If there's a magazine you want to see me talk about, then please put your comments below. But as usual guys, thank you very very much for watching.